Well, hello and welcome to some guitar talk. Today I want to talk about capos and using them. And there are a lot of different kinds of capos and different types of guitars need different kind of capos and, and all of that. So I'll, I'll briefly discuss that and then I'm going to talk about capo positioning, why we might want to use one, and some of those kinds of things. And so I'm, use, I'm starting with my nylon string guitar. It, this particular one has a 24 inch scale which uh, causes me to tune it to a standard guitar, guitar tuning as general rule. Now this is this particular capo is a D'Addario uh, capo with a attachment for a tuner which is handy and I like that. Uh, the real point of it is that it's flat and there's no um, there's no arch to it, a radius and that's because the fretboard on a classical tends to be flat. And um, so if we think about capoing position to start with, and here we have, um, I'm just playing a G chord. Uh, most people would probably play their G like that. I don't. Um, and I, I may have not talked about that. I, I could briefly. The reason I play my G this way is it's easier to go to C and even down to D7. So it just makes chord changes quicker. And then if I want to go to G7, I just lift my little finger and add my index finger, and there's my G7. Um, G, G major 7 is one fret up from that. So I can make a lot of variations in my G chords by playing it this way. Now, that said, let's get on to capoing. So at zero fret, um, when we talk about the G chord, and if we're going to play an old time song or something, your main chords in that song are going to be G, C, D, and maybe an E minor. Now there'll be other accidentals. Uh, sometimes there'll be an A7 that leads to a D, things like that. But you get the picture and you're familiar with it, hopefully. And if not, you will become familiar with it. And so I know how to play in the key of G. Someone comes along and says, I need to do this song in A flat. I take my capo and I put it behind the first fret. This is the first fret. And um, I don't, I generally don't like to get it right on top of it or too close to it. I like a little room for it. Some guitars have a problem with that and that's usually the setup of the instrument. Um, and it, well, a myriad of other things, fret wear, things like that. But that's how I position my capo. I try to make sure it's evenly even across uh, the strings and now there I am that is no longer a G it's an A flat and all the chords I would normally play in the key of G I would play and I'd be in the key of A flat and that's called when when we go up one fret that's called a half a step and or plus one and so someone says, well, I want to be in the key of A, I go up one more plus two, and that G becomes an A. And now someone wants to play in B flat, I go up another one, uh, that's plus three. I'm now in B flat, and I play all the same chords. And... Uh, same, and that's the scenario. I'm going to go up to the fifth fret for us. Uh, someone says, I want to play in the key of B. I would go up to the fourth fret. And now all those G expressions are in the key of B. And then um, the fifth fret, it becomes C. Now you can go up further. Some people, you know, say, oh, you should never go past the fifth fret, etc. Um, that's often... Uh, concept in banjo tuning in banjos just because they have a big knob up here you know for that drone string but um, I don't think we need to go past the fifth fret but I think people can and if they want to uh, and their car guitar plays cleanly that way I, I see no particular problem with it it's going to get more crowded as you go up further so if we were we're at the fifth fret I said I'd go up fifth I'll give you an example though Someone wants to do C sharp. This is not where I would play C sharp, but you could. You could go up to the sixth and the seventh, it becomes D. 
which is also not how I would generally play in the key of D. But you can do that. So that's the G chord progression. Now, one of the reasons, uh, when I was young and I was learning to play the guitar, there were people who would say things like, oh, that's a cheater. And you have to learn to play in all the keys. Well, maybe they did me a favor because I was forced to learn to play things that I might have never bothered learning. And so it was helpful that way. But it's not really a cheater. It's a tool that you, is, allows you to further your musical expression because some, some uh, progressions sound better than others for different types of songs. And so when you get into some of the some of the old timey songs, that G chord progression is a really nice chord progression that you might not be able to use if you were without a capo. And, and so that's why you'd want to do that. That's one of the reasons it often shows up in a lot of folk music and, and so on. I'll give you another example in a little bit when we get to the E progression. But um, that's that. So let's talk now. Uh, let's go back down here and look at the key of D. Because that also is useful for capoing. And uh, the key of D has its own nice sound to it. There's some real old time uh, Irish type tunes that we inherited that I think sound really good with the D progression. Uh, like the Streets of Laredo was originally an Irish tune. And, and that shape has a nice tone to it for certain types of folk music and, and things. So you want to play in the key of D, we're still talking about capoing, so I don't want to get upside down in that, but uh, we'll stay on track. So, so you want to keep doing that. Uh, now if we want to go up D, um, you capo, right? Now that becomes D sharp or E flat. They share they share a position because D flat and or E flat and D sharp are the exact same key. But that's where I'm at with D chord progressions. And um, that's capo one plus one. Now plus two becomes E. So there's your key of E. Let's say that you don't know how to play E chords very well. It's really good in your D and, and G progressions, but you have a hard time with, with the E chords, and some people do, and it's okay. Capo to and play your D chords, and you're in the key of E. So if we think of the basic chords, you're going to have a D, a G, and an A, or an A7, and your minor could become a B minor, and uh, those, those are your basic shapes that replace the G, C, D, and E minor. And so you can kind of work your way through that. And going up, then uh, capo 3 becomes F. Now, this D chord shape at capo 3 is a really um, good shape for uh, people that are kind of beginning. Maybe they don't have strong hands. They can't play an F chord very well. A lot of people have trouble with the F chord. Um, and that becomes your F and you're still playing D, G, A7 back to D and there you're in the key of F. Plus 4 becomes F sharp. And then uh, plus 5 takes you back to G. Now, what's nice about that? Let's say we're setting around and there's a couple guitars. Uh, maybe there could be three or four depending on how we know to use the chords. And um, everybody wants to play, you know, Power in the Blood, an old-timey gospel song in the key of G. Do they all have to sound exactly the same? So there you got five or six guitar players down here 
first fret, strumming away G chords, there's power in the blood, and it just sounds like a big mud of guitars, a big, you know, mudslide of guitars, and, and instead of any nuance. And so if you come up here, and you capo five, and he's down, my, say my friend's down there playing power in the blood in, at, at the first position, and I come up here to the fifth position, and I play D chords, we sound different. And all of a sudden the music isn't so muddy and it has a nicer flavor to it. So that's another reason we use capos, is so we can all play in the same key without playing the exact same chords because it frankly can get really boring when you got six guitars playing the same chords. At least that's my opinion that it's boring. And people that might not think it's boring maybe haven't heard the alternative yet. So, so there's that. Now let's go to C, and, and I hope this will help you. So we learn to play in C. Now the only problem with learn to play in C for some people, there's your F chord. A lot of people have a hard time with that. I've been doing that, F, that chord since uh, I was about 11 years old. So 1971, I started learning to play that chord. It always came in handy when I would play C, which is what I would do normally if I'm going to play in the key of C. I wouldn't capo 5 and play G chords. I'd play C, but my friend might want to capo 5 and play G chords, so we sound different. So there's C. Now if I go plus 1, and I hope this helps, but we know that makes us higher, so immediately we have C sharp. Well, C sharp it shares a position with D flat. So there's C sharp. And I use the same progressions right there. And I'm just going through this so you know those positions. You can write it down. You can do whatever you want. Hopefully it'll help you figure out your capo system. Now if I go to plus two, that puts me in the key of B. And so once again for flavor, right, if someone's playing the key of D here and I put my capo at plus two and I use C chords, you can hear it's the same, but it's a little different. Come up here, I want that becomes a D sharp or an E flat. And then capo four, well, look at that. I can play in the key of E with C chord. And sometimes in blues, I would use a seventh and come up here, right? And do a bar chord type thing. And uh, play around with that but I don't want to distract us I come up here so that's E I come up here now I'm in F at the fifth fret so it's not going to help you if you don't know how to play your F chord because you're going to have to use it there but that's the idea F sharp and then eventually I could play a G way up here which would be kind of fun if you can Someone else was playing a G with uh, using D chords cape. So here's three people, right? I'm playing in the key of G. I didn't get my capo on all the way. I'm playing C chords with a capo at the seventh fret, and I'm in the key of G. My friend's down here at the fifth fret playing D chords, and he's in the key of G. And then someone else is down here at zero fret playing G chords, and we're all in the same key, sounding a little different. So that's kind of fun. Now if we get to E, E overlaps with F a little bit. Now the E, okay, so again, that E gives us a flavor of like, some kind of blues stuff and and that's fun, right? So I want that flavor. Let's say there's a song. This happens in the at our church sometimes where there's a kid's song that needs that bluesy flavor, but they like to do it in the key of G. Well, if you just capo at the third fret and play those E chords, you've got it. And uh, 
So let's go over the E chords. So z open is E, plus one is next to the key of F. And I won't say much about that. I'll talk about F chords in a little bit. And uh, plus two becomes F sharp. Plus three, I've already said, becomes a G. Plus four becomes a G sharp. And plus, uh, or, or A flat. G sharp and A flat, they're the same key. Uh, plus five becomes an A. And like I said, most people don't need to go to pl pass plus five because you repeat with a different progression down here. And if you know how to do that, you're fine. But this goes to B flat. And uh, which I would normally, if I was going to do B flat with a cape, would probably be a G chords at number three. And number seven becomes a B. So, so that's how that works. Now, when we talk about F chords, it's essentially just a barred E. You come up plus one and you add your two fingers there and you don't play this, this string. And that's, that's the same as capoing almost. It's, that's an F. Um, you can bar it clear across and get a, an F also. Now if you count up, first position F is F and then comes up and becomes F sharp. Up here it's G. Here it's A flat. Here it's A. B flat, B, and then you go C and D. And uh, those bar chords are great to know how to do to add flavor if that's where you are in your plane. Uh, but if you're not, you're not. And then, as I said, sometimes just for the, the whole point of flavor, we use the capo. And so that's essentially how it works on capo usage. And I encourage you to, to write it down, figure out what keys are what. I've gone through all the important things. You know, if you talk about the G progression, the C progression, the D progression, the E progression, you pretty much can cover all keys that you need to cover using your capo very comfortably and never going past um, five, position five plus five. Now, the other thing that's a little different. Um, I, the other day I had, I'm swapping gu guitars here for a minute. The other day uh, for some Christmas songs, well, I'm not quite there yet, but um, I did some music that my wife marked as minus two. I'll do that on the 12 string in just a minute. But this guitar is tuned to a minus one. So what I would call that is decapoing. So um, if I were to say what's my open position, it's capo one. Like, and you might see here the arch on this capo. So it, this is a this has a radius on the fretboard, so it has a radius capo. So I might put it there, and that puts me in the key of G because I tuned this guitar, my standard guitar tuning minus one. I happen to like that. Um, there's a one of the reasons I do that is um, I found if I play in the 24 uh, inch scale length um, there the intonation seems better on the shorter scale length and the, the slackness of the strings is comfortable so I just experimented around and thought well if I if I do a minus one how's that feel and it, and it gives me a lot more slack to the strings I can manipulate them better and yet I can put bigger strings on these are like a, a light medium on this and and they're big but I can bend them and and they're they, they're soft feeling so I get a little more sound and I like that I also like the sound of a slacker string as opposed to a stiffer string so that by detuning so if I go minus one from this is with the capo here I'm at standard guitar tuning so that's G and then this becomes, you know, uh, G sharp or A flat and then A and B flat. And it's off one from what I just showed you because I detune one step, which you can do. Anyone can do it. But what that does is now this becomes F sharp. And sometimes I like F sharp, but I like G chords. And then D becomes D flat, 
E becomes E flat, C becomes C flat, and uh, which is really B. There's no such thing as C flat. And uh, so it's handy. So you can do that. That's an option. I'm not saying you need to right away. It's something you can do if you're of a mind to. And uh, that brings me to my 12 string, which is capoed at 2 right now, which puts it in standard tuning range because this, this particular instrument is tuned minus standard guitar tuning minus 2. So my capo at the 2nd fret puts me in the key of G. And now this one's a little different. I'll show you the capo. And, and so um, it goes around the neck of the guitar and presses from the center of the guitar neck instead of clamping on. Um, I feel it, it, it's better for consistency overall um, when, uh, when capoing I get a, a more uh, uniform pr pressure that allows the strings to come down more evenly. And uh, it, it's not a quick release or anything. I just happen to like the sound that it produces, especially on a 12 string. And uh, so that puts me at G. And all these up here would be the same if we counted this at first. Then that'd be plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, etc. By detuning. So I, I use the Guitar Tuner app a lot of times. And it has on there standard Guitar Tuning minus 2. Um, it's and and so this is a little extra, but it's still about capoing. I also like that I can just push that capo down, and that's it. Just lives on the guitar like that all the time. And so now, when I play G chords. I'm playing the key of F. Now. This is a 26 and a half inch scale, a little longer. So if you look, the nylon string, 24 inch scale. The, the six string Gretsch, 25 inch scale. Uh, this is a 25 and a half inch scale. So um, I, I'm kind of keeping the tension of the strings the same, even though the scale length changes by deciding where I want to tune it. And, and there are a lot of people, oh, you can't do that. Well, apparently you can, and it works fine. So, so then, you know, um, I haven't really talked about minors, but um, if I'm using A minor progression, This is, I'd have to capo here to actually be in A minor. So when I subtract that two, two half steps or one whole step, I, I end up being in G minor down here. So that's how capos work. And what I found on this particular guitar because of its size, um, by detuning, uh, it actually gives me a lot more versatility because I'm comfortable with capo and clear up here at the 7th fret. I could go up to the ninth if I want. It works fine. I've done it. Um, there's just rarely a reason to. But I can capo at the 7th fret and, um, and play. And I can go clear down two, two half steps below most guitars. So... I actually have more versatility and I like it very much. So I hope you've enjoyed that discussion on capo usage. And uh, the next guitar talk, I'm going to talk about the D chord progression and how we can move it. And, and what that looks like. And we'll, we'll call that getting all D's in school or something. I don't know. Anyhow, Lord bless you till next time.